We are now live. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone, and happy Monday to all of you out there. We have a special guest that's going to chime in with us in just a moment. We're going to be talking about um, just the different impacts that COVID has had on relationships. And so, um, uh, you know, that it's been brought up a lot. Um, I'm sure all of you out there um, have experienced something in your relationship regarding COVID, whether it be positive or negative. Um, hopefully, most of you, your, um, your experiences have been positive, that um, COVID has actually brought you and your partner closer together um, like it did with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we do realize for some, uh, for many, it, um, it hasn't. And uh, we were told by a lot of people that um, COVID has been difficult for them. Definitely. So if I can try to chime in right here and see um, if I can invite her on. Um, I'm trying to get her on. I'm just waiting for her to accept everything right now. And there she is. There she is. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys doing? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My apologies. The time difference is just so crazy. We are over here in Canada. So I thank you guys so much for um, agreeing to the time. I know it's it's a little bit tricky during the season that we're in. So I thank you guys for that. That's quite what, part, right. what part of Canada are you uh, residing? So I'm residing in Niagara Falls, the ultimate tourism destination. <laughs> it's my backyard. We go for walks on Sundays. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right. So um, uh, let's, uh, let's do the introduction. So please let yeah. everyone know all about you, what you do, and everything. Wonderful. Um, so I am a licensed paralegal in the province of Ontario, and... Um, I'm a wife, I am a mother, <laughs> I'm an author, and um, I do wear many hats. I'm a philanthropist as well, and um, I am so happy that we get to have this conversation. It is something um, that a lot of my clients, um, people that I encounter daily, um, it's just a conversation that we need to have. It's a discussion that we've been having for quite a while, and I feel like with what you do and your background, who else? Who else to do this with? So um, that's pretty much just a, the tad bits about me. Um, but um, my major thing that I always say is I'm a woman of God, and I always try my best to stay in line with that and to always remember who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. I love. It. You said you're. Oh, how many children do you have? Two. One is seven, and one is two. My hands are full. Oh, yes. <laughs> definitely, definitely, they are. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Very good. Well, um, I know you also asked us to do a, a small introduction of ourselves as well. Michael and I, um, actually, interesting story. I won't go into the full details right now, but uh, Michael and I actually met twenty-two years ago, and we have currently been married now for only five years. So it's like uh, when we met, we kind of were distant friends, and uh, we connected six years ago, and then it's been an uh, inseparable sense. Yes. <laughs> he has children um, from a previous marriage. Um, he has a total of six children. I have three. Mm -hmm. And so uh, together, that's nine. <laughs> <laughs> we had some children, but the majority of them, they're pretty much all of them are grown. The youngest was 15, she just turned 15 yesterday. And so the rest of our children are grown, so it's been a little easier on us. We don't have small babies running around the house, as you do. Right. <laughs> so it's a little easier. And, um, Michael has been in the counseling business. Wow. For at least, at least 30, at least 35 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, 
He's not new to this at all. No. Definitely not new to this. Um, we, I wrote a book. Um, as well? Yes. I wrote three books, but one that I, I pushed the most is called Four Powers in Marriage. Um, you, Sex, Money, and Manipulation. Mm. Um, also a personal trainer. And uh, uh, what else? Wedding officiant, everything that comes along with that. Um, we also do, we have a little service that we do on Sunday morning called the Freaking Gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, then what do you do? I'm a financial advisor. Um, basically, I teach all my clients all about money, how to do uh, everything with it, how to get it, uh, how to flip it, save it, all the stuff. Everything that comes money. with money. Yeah, every, everything. I do everything with money except for taxes and mortgages for right now. I'm going to maybe get a mortgage license soon. Yeah. Um, I do hear a little feedback on the line right now. I don't know if it's us or you. I'm not hearing it on my enter. Oh, okay. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just us. So, I don't know if I can try to switch that up, but um, I'm not sure. But okay, we'll just keep on rolling. <laughs> Is it better now on your end? Um, I think so. Oh. No, it's still there. It but goes, it's okay. Yeah, it goes in and out. It's in and out. I think we're still okay. Okay, they're saying there's a feedback. Um, yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me see if it's on my side. If do you have two phones going? No, I only have my one phone going. Same here. Um, okay, let's see. Work. Do you think we should? Okay, hold on. Let me check if it's me. Do you have a mic plugged in? No mic. I'm just using the cell phone. Me too. You know what, I'm going to try plugging this mic in and see um, if that changes it any. Oh. I don't know. Can you hear us? It's no. gone now? No. Okay. Mm. It's gone, but when I plug the mic in, yeah, it, it leaves when I plug the mic in, but as soon as I plug it in, I can't hear you no more. Mm -hmm. It's gone. But I don't know. So I'm not sure how to fix that feedback. That's strange. That is very strange. You know, let me try something one more thing. Let me try this one. Okay. Say something. Hey. Oh, okay. Now I can hear you. You can hear so, me better. Is the feedback there still? It's still there. Yeah, it's still there. That's where do you guys want do you want me to just do you want to start it over maybe? Uh or are we good to go? Um I think uh, actually I'm okay with it if it's not too bothersome. What do you think, Michael? I don't I um I well, we could ask the viewers. I think somebody said I'm still hearing it. I'm hearing more too. Let's try this. Let's start over, but um, maybe if you go live on your side, and then we'll chime in on you. Okay, let's let's try that. Cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna end this, and then let's turn it on your side. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, but they're saying, oh, they, they said it's still there, but they can hear. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Listen, we're going to do this. All right, so because we're talking about COVID-19 and relationships, um, I want to hear about you guys. How about you guys tell us, how has COVID-19 impacted your marriage? Wow. Um, it's Well, I think, I think the question should be, how have we impacted COVID-19 with your marriage? <laughs> I like that. I like that perspective, Michael. Yes, because I mean, really, um, not to bloviate at all, but we went into COVID nineteen with a working and a communicative relationship that there was no way that it was going to alter us in any way. 
you know, and that, and, and when you have a problem and something comes, you don't know you have the problem, but now because of what came, it just exposes what, what was there already. And so that's one of the good things about COVID-19 as far as the lockdown and being closer or being in the same room with someone is that now whatever has been the problem is really going to be exposed and has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Um, I want to say that, well, once COVID started for us, it was kind of like, oh, what do I do? Because... Like I had mentioned to someone once before, myself, I am super, super busy. And it was, it's almost like every single day of the week, I am outside of the house. Whether, I mean, there's not one day where I can just sit home and, have, and not have to go anywhere. And that's been going on for years. Like every day, Monday through Sunday, every day I have to go. There's some place that I'm required to be. And so with COVID, it was kind of like, oh, I don't have to go anywhere today. Mm -hmm. I just got to sit here. And so it was just adjusting like that because now it's like, oh, I got to readjust my work schedule. And with Michael and I, we have such a strong communication uh, between the two of us that um, we were able to um, take that energy and try to just develop it more within the household. Yes. And so, like, we didn't sit around and I know everybody was catching up on all their series of TV shows and all this stuff. I don't even, I think we watched one series, one show because our daughter had us do it. But everything else, we were trying to be creative. So, because um, we celebrated birthdays and anniversaries mm -hmm. all throughout this COVID. And we were just being creative on different things to do. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things was um, uh, we had a dinner I, oh, I made everything and put it into a picnic basket mm -hmm. and flipped the whole bedroom and made it kind of like we were out at a park, you know, like laid down the blankets and everything. And, you know, that was that was how we had dinner. And then mm -hmm. um, we played quarantine Olympics. We do dares with each other all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's kind of just different things of just being creative to keep having fun with each other. If you can't go out to an event, a concert, a movie, uh, a dinner outside of the house, just trying to find different things within the house to do together. Yes. Yeah, and something um, really great that Michael says is it exposes what's already there, you know? I find that that's a very good way to look at it. Um, <clears throat> being in the field that I'm in, I see and speak with people um, quite often, and um, I did go ahead and collect a few of the things that people were saying. So um, I just want to share them on here. So uh, some people have said it, it has impacted them just in the sense that they can't go on their vacations anymore, which would have been their break away from home. And um, that for myself has impacted my family because um, in that sense, like we literally had 2020 all booked. I, I'm still awaiting refunds. Let's just say that. Um, so... <laughs> It's um, definitely something, but it didn't break us in that sense, but it's something that has, you know, happened because of COVID. So it's a real thing. Um, so another person said outings are limited. Some said space in the beginning was very, um, it, it was something that they wanted more of because they were seeing their partner too much. Uh, another said finances in the beginning um, was a little bit crazy because of um, one partner being displaced from the job. Um, but now um, that everything has kind of become the new norm is what I'm calling it. Um, it's kind of just adjusting on that front. Uh, and then some, someone else says they pray more together. And that is a good mm -hmm. thing which I think yeah. is great. Um, I myself have been in my closet like more this year than any other year. Um, and there's so much to pray for, so much to pray about. And um, in this season, we're shifting. And um, I want people to recognize that it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not just we're shifting into a new normal, but we also have to shift in our mindset. Um, we have to learn how to adjust to situation when it happens. And it's not just like, okay, COVID came, let's wear a mask or sanitize or whatever. It literally has to be an overall shift. Um, so I think that's what's happening in this season. Um, another one says, 
little impact as Spouse is still working. However, we've communicated more on the weekends since COVID-19. Um, so those are just a few takeaways that I had from conversations of asking people, married couples, how has COVID-19 um, impacted your marriage? How has COVID-19 impacted your finances um, with your partner? So um, none of these people that I've spoken to have been displaced, but I do know of marriages that have broken, um, you know, over the COVID-19 season, um, you know, various reasons. And, and that could include communication, financing, and just one spouse mm -hmm. being around too much. <laughs> so, um, you know, sometimes um, not every relationship is at the level of, um, like, I always say my husband and I were a piece in a pot. And it's true. You will see him. You will see me. Like, we're just like that. But not everyone likes that. Some people like space. Um, and some people are okay with, you know, not seeing their partner for a day or two or whatever going away to work in a different city like different things but for us we're just if you see him trust that i'm at the corner coming but yeah that, <laughs> that's just what it is so from um go ahead michael i'm sorry uh, it was interesting you used the word impact um we because of the place that we're in in our lives together we took the impact as to be something profitable and wonderful. And I saw that, uh, I heard that you used the impact. Um, well, you spoke of some of the people uh, and they replied to the word impact as how it affected them um, as far as um, not being so rewarding or profitable. So I would challenge some of the people that are listening to write down the impact on the good side and the negative side or the bad side. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and with that, then now they can kind of evaluate themselves to be able to see uh, where to be productive, what to cut off, what to increase. Yeah. Absolutely. That's powerful. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great um, takeaway from tonight's conversation. So thank you so much for that. Um, so seeing that, LaDonna, you're in the finances, let's talk about, oh, you made a baby. That's amazing. That's great. Good stuff. Good for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so seeing that you're in the financial field, I just want a few um, takeaways um, for the people that are on right now um, with regards to finances. How do you think, or from your professional experience with the finances, what do you think can be um, some things that can be done to make sure that that's a solid foundation? Well, um, first and foremost, and this is something that um, is interesting because prior to COVID, there were many times where we were trying, when I sit down with my clients, I try to prep them for the rainy day. Because it's not if a rainy day is going to happen, it will happen. Mm -hmm. And COVID has been worldwide now to show everybody, this is your rainy day now. So going into it, um, a lot of times, like when I sit down with my clients, I say, okay, you need to start building your financial house, starting with your foundation and then building your way up from there. So with the foundation, um, on, I know everybody's philosophy is different. I know with mine, though, would be life insurance, especially if you have a family. If you have anyone that is depending on you, whether it be a spouse, a child, um, anyone like that, I feel that it's, it's almost it should be as required as auto insurance is, is life insurance because you are responsible for that person's lifestyle at that at this moment and god forbid if you pass away so does that person that person's lifestyle drastically changes um and then from there working on your budget and your debt and then your goals and dreams and your retirement um i've sat down with so many people that They've got money coming in. They've got money going out. They really don't keep track of it. So they don't even know how much is going out until they have a whole bunch of debt. And they're like, oh, well, how did I get here? Well, that's because you didn't monitor how much was going out versus how much is coming in. Out here in Las Vegas, we have the hotel industry. So there's a lot of people out here that will have a tip. And so they've got money coming in daily. So they're like, oh, I don't know. I think I made 5000 I think I made 10000 They don't even keep track of what it is that they're making. And they're just blowing money every day. 
And so for those type of people, I always say keep track of what you've got coming in and then also keep track of what you have going out. So that way you can have some type of budget and you know what is necessary to run your household in the event, like now that COVID has happened, mm -hmm. you know what's needed to make sure you have bring in every month to make sure the household stays afloat or, you know, you keep everything nice and comfortable where there's not much of a change. A lot of people, because of COVID, they've had to make a drastic switch because obviously, you know, finances, if not um, dwindled, it kind of almost diminished as far as what they brought in. Mm -hmm. And so it had to change a lot of different things there. So being mindful of that um, is very important. And then, of course, working on your savings and your retirement. Savings is huge. Don't just have a 401k, but have that emergency savings as well for times such as these. Mm -hmm. And not just saving it at a bank because the bank gives you no interest rate whatsoever. I'm not sure about Canada, but I know in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> no interest rate. And so it's just talking to a financial advisor that knows where to get those good interest rates at without risking the um, the safety of your principal. And so it's just, I know many times, especially with our folks, we think that we don't need help with money, but our folks are the ones that I've ran into that are the most detrimented by finances when it comes to crisis situations as we are, we are in right now. And so those are my, my things right there is protecting the household. Number one is life insurance. And then after life insurance, work on your budget, know what your budget is and start saving. Even if you're only saving $25 a week or a month, if that's all you can start with, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Just get used to the habit of saving and putting it away and don't spend it on, on the new iPhone that comes out or some new Jordans really leave it for what it's called emergency and so that's what the savings is for now if you like to travel whenever we do get to travel again and you want a travel fund okay so then you have a travel fund but you still got to have that emergency fund as well because again like i said it's not if an emergency is going to happen it's when because it will happen to all of us um if they're not you know obviously drastically affected by COVID right now um something will pop up and you just got to make sure you're prepared so when that hit happens it's not really a bad hit because you're like, oh, okay, it sucks has happened, but we're good. And wow. so after that, I think Wonderful. retirement. Wow, that's great. So preparation is key. Preparation is key, essentially. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Like, uh, we've said many times, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Always stay ready. Always stay ready so <laughs> that's a good one. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That's yes. good. All right, yes. so... Um, I wanted to go over to Michael now. So I know that you're in the fitness um, world and um, <laughs> I've been, I don't know, for the last, I would say three, four months, I've been saying mental health is health. And it's almost like I was speaking gibberish to my community or community. And um, I, I kept on saying it because I've recognized um, with this season, with the shift that's happening in the season, that um, it's mentally affecting a lot of people. But because of the taboo around that subject in our community, um, it's not being addressed. So seeing that you're in the fitness world, and a lot of my clients and a lot of people that I speak to, that's their way of just getting it out. That's the, their way of mentally de-stressing. Can you give us um, just a few pointers from your perspective on that? Um, as far as, I mean, I, I was listening to you. You gave a couple things, but you want me to pinpoint what in particular? I would say um, the import, like how has you work out a lot? Yes. Do you work out <laughs> sometimes you release your um, mental stress? Has it helped you? How has it helped you? Wait, a minute, wait hold on one sec. We, we got to. Your volume went down a lot where we didn't hear you. We didn't hear what you just said. Your volume went down. I can, we can barely hear you. Let me take Are this out. Now, 
Very, very little. It's hard to hear you. Oh, there it is. Try again. It's better? There you go. There you go. Yes. Wonderful. All right. So let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about, um, you were taught a lot. So give us a few pointers. I know you were taught a lot and I know it, I don't know if you work out sometimes to relieve your mental, um, stress but i know a lot of my clients they tell me when i'm stressed or when i'm overwhelmed i like to work out um have okay. you ever come across that or can you give us a few pointers on that um with regards to mental health and you know exercise i got you okay um first you have to you have to put it in perspective there are there are reasons why people work out as you mentioned health there is vanity there's ego and there is um longevity and then there's because of heart or health conditions or health related conditions I should say and so when you put those in perspective then now um, uh, working out is a must at the time of COVID I think it increased people to work out or that they should work out because part of the um, exaggeration of it dragging the body down was be not being in shape, having certain ailments like diabetes and, and things of the sort. So a lot of people were looking at it from that perspective to jump on the wagon, figuratively speaking, to combat that situation. I work out, I've been working out for, man, pretty much all my life. Um, in the terms of bodybuilding, powerlifting, and things of sort, um, it's been for the last 45 years, roughly. Tell them how old are you? Oh, I'm 61. And so, um, <laughs> yeah. and so it, it has become a way of life. And so in the mental perspective of my being, working out has increased my, my mental awareness. It has increased my physical abilities. It has increased my ego. It has increased my, um, my, my sex drive. Um, it's a lot of things of what it does. So now uh, implementing or COVID coming in, these are the issues that people have been dealing with for a long time. I think it's just making people realize that they have to get in better shape and they have to start doing something now. And so um, um, as, as far as walking, <laughs> as far as um, whatever the case may be, it's just an awesome thing. I don't think it's nothing new that people are being hit with because of COVID. I think it's something that has been going on and has been um, uh, exacerbated because now they have to do something to protect their health. If you something can't believe you're with... 61, Michael. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It, it's, if it becomes a way of life, yeah. then it's not something you started doing. It was something you already do. And if you've been already doing it and then you get benefit from it, then it's something you keep doing. And so with the COVID, I think people are realizing that they need to start. I think because of COVID, people are realizing that they have, they have started or they were doing it before that. And so I just I, I think it's, a, it's all over the board, so to speak, with the health. But I think it depends on each individual person to say what they wanted, what they were trying to accomplish or not accomplish or what they're trying to be like and not be like or or for all the reasons that are presented that they do what they do. So I think COVID just it just brought awareness to people that they should be doing something because it's there. I would like to add to that um, because I did not work out as much mm -hmm. at all as, as Michael did. As a matter of fact, it's only been a year where I've been on a daily basis mm -hmm. that I keep up with him now when we work out together. But um, I would say for me, when I started before Michael, it was kind of like just to make sure I maintain myself. Mm -hmm. And that I did find that on days where I was having issues with whatever was going on in life working out now as I'm working out um, I want to say it can help mentally for a lot of people because now I have certain goals that I see and then as I keep up on a, a daily basis with myself I challenge myself in different things so it's um, it's it's it helps a lot inner you know with my inner self with my inner being and so it, it's been very very well very well, um, it's helped a lot for me, I and, want to say. And I would like to add, too, um, that it's interesting because um, 
my working out was for me. As LaDonna stated, her working out was for you, but because of me. Now, yes. Yes, now. Mm -hmm. It's important, and I hope that couples uh, or, or someone in your life, I hope that you challenge each other because of what you came into to continue to be better or to uh, keep in shape what you have. If anything, I would see or would think that a lot of people have taken back seat to working out mm -hmm. because it's an excuse not to have to do anything. And so therefore, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people, I pray there's not, but I'm pretty sure there, there are a good significant amount of people that have gained a lot of weight. In fact, I've heard people say, this is COVID weight. Yeah. And so <laughs> that's a popular one. Yeah. How many pounds they gained? And so, and I want to be mindful. My wife, and I'm not bloviating myself, but I got to speak the truth here. My wife is beautiful. <laughs> oh yes, she is. And I don't. I, I mean, I got to keep. I, look, I got to keep this together. Sixty-one or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Now, I had my focus to do it for myself, but I have even more of a focus to do it for us. Yes. Because I want to stay around longer, continue enjoying what I've got here. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Get them over here. That's so so there, are a, there are a plethora of reasons, but there again, I think COVID has just exposed the realities mm -hmm. of everyday life that we take for granted or we don't do enough of. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so our final um, question is around um, a big topic, um, and we will be ready to just discuss this one. Um, it's about um, sex. Um, oh, yeah. And <laughs> Go, girl. Bring it, bring it. <laughs> So I know that this will be a very right. transparent one then. <laughs> that is yes, um, we're married, um, so it is, it, it's definitely a part of, of, of our relationship. It's a part of, you know, our intimacy together. Um, yeah. So it's definitely something that we want to talk about. Um, listeners, you can um, note your questions down because the end, um, we're almost wrapping up. Just wanted to get their feedback on sex during COVID. I mean, I don't know if you guys used to go out, go to hotels, um, if you used to do, do, you know, just try to be, do something different. Um, I don't know, but I want to hear from you guys. Um, I want to hear how you guys have been creative. Don't have to go into details, but... Yes. So, yes. So, <laughs> Yes. We, do, we do this thing called dares. Yes. And so um, I'll dare my wife to do something. She'll dare me to do something. Mm -hmm. And in those dares, we can be as creative as we want to. Yes. And so there is one thing during COVID that I have never done before in my life. Wow. And that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And that is in the dare. I dare no, you dare me. I dare you. Yeah, she my wife dared me. No, this is dancing naked. Yeah, I dare okay, you. Okay, she dared me mm -hmm. and that I was supposed to dance with her. Now back in the day at the house parties, we did what this thing <laughs> called slow dance. Yes. And so we had to slow dance with each other, but naked. <laughs> that was my dare. That was my dare. Like I had my own playlist. I had a whole track going, yes. and I was like, "All right, babe, um, I need you to take all your clothes off." And he's like, "What are we doing?" He thought that we were just having sex. I was like, "No, we're gonna dance." And he's like, "Dance." I was like, "That's it. We're just slow dancing." Now naked. Now naked. Oh, girl. Ooh, watch it now. And so, <laughs> and so back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, we used to take and we would go and stand by the DJ booth. And we, we would ask the DJ, when are you going to play a slow song? And so he would say, we're going to play the slow song at the, after the next record. And so 
we would already have peeped out who we were going to dance with. And so there was this one young lady that I would dance with every time we were at the same party. And when we danced, we danced like we was really like getting busy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so now I'm with my wife. This is like years and ten years later. I'm with my wife and she tells me that we're going to dance butt naked, slow dance. So right away, I went back to back in the day. <laughs> Let me tell you something, girl. If you haven't tried it, you got to try it. This is the best, <laughs> wonderful experience I've ever had in my life. Oh, my goodness. Just the connection that you have with each yes. other. You just groove into the music. Ooh. And it's, it's different. I'm back, I'm back there right now. <laughs> um, and so you know just being creative something as simple as a slow dance yes. naked um, <laughs> just heightens your sexual experience a little bit more Yes. Um, we did one where we were trying out some exercise routines ah, yes. and your basic exercise routines like sit ups push ups planks but we did them on the bed naked Yes. <laughs> Talk about yes. being creative. Well, that's good. Yes. Yeah. So I laid under him as he was doing push-ups while he, he was on top, and we were just both naked. Didn't have sex yet. We were just naked. Yeah. Doing exercises, and then we rotated, and then I had to do my push-ups. Yes. Just something yeah. different. And 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 my so arms just, gave just up. be creative. Yeah. 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 His arms gave out while he was doing his push-ups. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's some great advice for sure. Be creative um, yes. in the sex department. Be prepared financially. Yes. And use COVID to make an impact. Don't let it impact you. Those were my yeah. takeaways from um, the conversation. Very powerful conversation. Um, and yeah. I really... Go ahead. Go ahead, Donna. Oh, we have another, um, another something else I wanted to add into. So... Um, not now, maybe tomorrow we're going to do this, but we're going to go live again and have a conversation. And the topic is called Sexy Secrets. Yes. And so this is to help couples go into each other's conversations a little bit more. Because all of us have our own thoughts in our mind, what we think about, what we desire, our own little fantasies. And sometimes we don't share them mm -hmm. with our partner. Mm -hmm. And so when you don't do that, it kind of creates... Um, uh, 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 not a divide, but it does it, it prohibits you from being able to come together. Yes. And so this is a conversation that we will be having next. But, you know, when we're talking about um, sex with couples during this COVID time, um, these secrets, these fantasies, these thoughts, desires, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, we all have our own. And it's just, it's when you're able to be comfortable enough with your partner and you trust your partner enough to handle your secrets, mm -hmm. then it just opens up that connection even more so with each other. And wow. I do realize that a lot of people may not even be that comfortable yet or may, and sadly may not even trust their partner enough to handle that secret of theirs. And so we're going to dive into that even more so as far as how to help couples get to that level. Yes. That's very powerful. Powerful. Um, very, very um, important conversations to have. Um, and like you said, married couples, we really need to be able to trust or partner with those sexual secrets so that there's not a disconnect. And, um, expectations are met. Um, so that's definitely great. Very good takeaways from tonight. Um, so I just want, before we get the questions, because uh, I know we only have an hour or whatever, you posted it's something. Out there. something on You're your page, up again. Um, oh. the other day. Are you hearing? Now, yes. Mm. It's going in and out a lot. Oh, I see it twirling. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. Maybe turn your Wi-Fi off. Okay, let me check. Are you hearing me better now? Yes. yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, with regards to weekly check-ins, uh, and my husband <laughs> has been trying to be consistent with this, and we were just even talking about it before I came on the live. 
And I'm like, why are you so annoyed with my weekly check-ins? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what we got to talk about. Yes. <laughs> is it that you don't want long, um, is it that you don't, you have a long answer and you don't want to talk about it? What is it that annoys you so much about my weekly check-ins? So he said, you know, I'm not annoyed, you know, weekly check-ins important so i'm so glad when i saw that um on your page as well um to just check in we really don't do that enough how was your week how was mm -hmm. your day you know how mm -hmm. was your shift at work um and i know it sounds so cliche but the check-ins are very important even for us as mm -hmm. um yes we're working from home um all of that is happening around us but we still can do that um weekly check-in so that was very um good to see so i am going to take questions now um for you guys to answer so for the people that are on um any questions for michael and ladonna anything um from what they said that you know kind of connected with you or with your situation that you want them to expound on um any financial questions for ladonna as well we're going to go ahead and take um the questions now before we close off Okay. Anything you want to add? Oh, I thought she said they were taking questions. Yeah, they, they type it in. Oh. So we asking a question or are they asking us a question? They're asking us a question. Oh, they didn't say nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> right? They might be mad. Yeah, they might be typing. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, they might be typing in a few questions. Oh. Yeah, but um, also I like to add because um, sometimes some of the questions or thoughts of the viewers are a little personal. It's okay to send us a private message, yes. and we I do believe we pretty much get back to everybody, um, yes. and then we even follow up with people to just yes. see how everything has been going. Oh, someone wants to know how did we meet each other? <laughs> Is that my story or your story? You better give your story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually um like i mentioned before we met um we initially met 22 years ago at church yes um he was an elder at a church i was the visitor i was like the new girl there and so um it was kind of like uh, once i got there they took me around the church introduced me to a lot of the, the prominent people michael was one of them and it was kind of like hi how you doing i'm ladonna i'm michael and that was pretty much it um and then throughout the years, as the years went on, we kind of just saw each other. And, you know, we always gave each other that church hug, like, hey, how you doing? And that was pretty much the, you know, the gist of it. We didn't really speak to each other after that. Now, from my first time meeting him, I always had a crush on him because I just thought he was this super attractive man that just had this amazing poise and stance about himself. You know, he always caught my attention. So anytime we were... Anytime I was out at a function, because we ran in a few of the same circles, I would see him. And from a distance, I would wave or, you know, like I say, give that church hug and move on. And in that time frame, um, he got married. I got married. Um, and it's interesting. We were both married for 15 years, mm -hmm. divorced about the same time. And then I was working at um, a function uh, where I was hosting and I was interviewing all the different people that were coming through that event. And I happened to see Michael. And I was like, oh, my goodness, there's a guy again. I was like, there he is. And it was so, and just so people know, like, I didn't really, rem I didn't know anything about him. Like, we never exchanged phone numbers prior to that anything. And so it was like, when I saw him, I was like, oh, there he is again. And so this time, I was single. I wasn't married. And um, I approached him and gave him, he gave, actually, he gave me a mm -hmm. different hug. It wasn't that church hug anymore. No, it was <laughs> Okay, let me just embellish, <laughs> let me embellish this small por portion right here. Mm -mm. So it wasn't the church hug. It's right. And, and how I know it wasn't a church hug is because when I gave her a hug, she pressed her body parts against my body no. parts. No. He, LaDonna. He, he has these big, said, massive, muscular arms. He pulled me into him. I had no choice. But you, but I didn't see you try. You both just embraced that moment. Thank you. I like that. I'll take. That. You know what? 
I'm going to let you have that, <laughs> but I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but she said, yes, it was the single now hug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That would be a very good mm -hmm. one. Wow. And then, yeah. So we yeah. exchanged phone numbers then, and, yes. you know, like I said, it's been inseparable. Yes. So that's how we met. Powerful. <laughs> Wow, that's that's amazing. Um, and you know what? It's always good when it happens like that, um, that way there's not a misunderstanding. Considering right. that you had uh, circles that were, you know, kind of close or whatever, there wouldn't be no misunderstanding where that's concerned because, you know, everything has already been swept clean. It's now it's now a new yeah. beginning for you guys. So it's always yeah. good um, when it happens like that. And even just for yourself, right? You feel good that um mm -hmm. there's nothing hidden right yeah so that's mm -hmm. um that's amazing that's amazing all right uh any other questions before we wrap up uh tonight um we're in some great company i thank you guys for joining um us as well it was a very good conversation takeaways like yeah. be prepared with your finances be creative in the bedroom and uh other question here uh What's the one thing you'd recommend young couples that has sustained your marriage over the years? One recommendation uh, or some recommendation for couples um, that, you know, you've used to sustain your marriage over the years. I would, I would say um, be true to who you are, mm -hmm. that now when you come in the company, or that you are in the company of who you choose to be with, they don't get any surprises. Yes. Yes. You know why that's so powerful, Michael? I said that a couple of weeks ago on a conversation about marriages. And I literally said those exact words. Be true to who you mm -hmm. are. Be your true self. Recognize who you are. Don't get lost. In, in in transition mm -hmm. you know we know who you are and you will never ever have to change that the person that's receiving you they already know that you have you know celebrated you you've acknowledged you and they will just be open to that yes absolutely and i would say the other one is there's a scripture in the bible that says uh let your yes be yes and your nay be nay Amen. If you do that, if your yes is yes and your nay is nay, then you're not making promises you can't keep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Something else that I have um, that I had told Michael when we got together was that, um, you know, in our communication and being honest with each mm -hmm. other, please never let me walk into a room where someone else knows more about you than I do. That's right. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Beautiful. So that opened up um, communication right there. Yes. We have another question. What advice would you give to young couples who are about to be first-time parents? How do you make sure that we are still making time for each other, even though there is a baby in the picture now? Hello. If you are, if you are raising, make sure that when you are raising your kid or children, that you set out with the same perspectives on how to do that. Because then that way, you're not trying to spend time trying to undo something or one of the other parents did uh, and vice versa, but you're on the same page. So now that time that you plan is your time because you're working together as opposed to, um, babe, you going to the store? Yes. Uh, can you get me some milk? Yes. And then you come back from the store and you brought back all this other stuff, but you didn't ask me if we had it already in the house. <laughs> so you have to be on the same page because in that way, you could have been at the store in a shorter period of time and we could have had more fun when you got back. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> Good perspective, you know I mean? definitely. Yeah, and so that, that really helps. It really does. Um, and, and, and don't forget each other. Yeah. The things you did to make the baby, make sure you make time to continue to have more fun just in case you want to have more babies. Yeah, never forget <laughs> dating. Continue yeah. dating. Yeah. Yes. Powerful. Yes, um, any thoughts from you on this one, LaDonna? Um, I put a post out there a while ago and it says, you know, a, a babysitter 
is much cheaper than a, a divorce lawyer. Mm. So make it imperative to make sure that you find ways to be with each other, find ways to do things to, with each other. Um, when it comes to raising a child, talk about it now. I mean, this is your first baby. And so talk about these things now. What are your guidelines? What are your parenting expectations? Um, is college going to be in the picture? Is it not? Um, are you going to implement um, chores and disciplines or not? Like all those things that it takes to raise a child, talk about them now and stick to it. That way you guys have a plan. That's the main thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I think too, Share in the responsibilities of nurturing and raising the child. Yeah, yes. absolutely. That's that's key right there, especially um, for a newborn. Um, I mean, as LaDonna and I know, it can be so, um, the energy, it, it's so much energy um, when <laughs> the baby is, is just, it's, it's a newborn. There's a, it's a lot of energy. Um, feedings, um, staying up um, emotionally. Um, so it's also uh, important that the mental health again is taken care of because we all know about uh, PTSD. We all know about all the things that can affect um, not just women but men as well mm -hmm. um, during these first few months. So they are very crucial. Um, something very important, Michael says, just work as a, you know, be on the same page very important yeah. mm -hmm. not with just also be on the same page not with just the baby but with in-laws oh yeah because yeah. <laughs> yeah. when a new baby steps in certain in-laws like to try to take over yeah. the mm -hmm. the couple needs to talk about that in advance to figure out how are you going to deal with in-laws that cross boundaries mm -hmm. absolutely yeah absolutely boundaries are very important um and um you know, reminding yourself at the end of the day. <laughs> Let's talk about in-laws. <laughs> what? <laughs> LaDonna, look what you started. <laughs> Can you give us a few pointers on that? Exactly, yes. <laughs> I know in my book, The Four Powers in, in Marriage, there's a segment where I say the in-laws become outlaws. They can, oh yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, hold on. Let's see. There was another question right here. Where is it at? Can you give us the two pointers first before you go into that question, LaDonna? Okay. Yes. What well, are your, your point pointers? What? Um, what? You said the in-laws become outlaws. Yes, the in-laws become outlaws, meaning that now I'm resuming <laughs> that back to, back to Western days. And so the, the outlaws are the ones who was always coming to take. They weren't bringing anything to give. And so in-laws start out to be the product of, of, of the people that they are coming to see and be a part of. Well, they have to be on the same page because the boundaries that are set, we have to make sure, or they have to make sure that the in-laws don't become outlaws, meaning that they start taking things away from what they have, have put in place to be structured. And that now when they leave, that baby is, uh, all messed up and spoiled and off its uh, structure and off its plan and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So now they're taking away, and that's the outlaw perspective. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. taking away the, the, the valuableness of family and relationship and unity, and they're not bringing anything to it. And now the parents that are left with the baby have to now clean up that little short period of time Mm. which will take now, you know, you, have, you got to reorganize the kid and get it back to some type of uh, normalcy mm -hmm. after the yeah, routine. Thank you. After the, the, the in-laws or the, the in-laws have left. Yes. And so that's what I mean about the outlaw in-law, that when they leave, they're taking stuff and they didn't mm -hmm. leave anything of value and work. Very good perspective. Um, the other question that popped up was, what is your take on distance relationships? Um, relationship to marriage. You know, um, um, the person that asked that question, uh, can you provide us with some clarity? Do you mean long distance or do you mean relationships that are just distant, like disconnected? Mm -hmm. We just need some clarity um, to give you a clear answer. 
I would say while we're waiting for him to um, uh, to put in the clarity on what he means by that, um, I know in this time, for me, distant relationships were hard just for myself, only because I'm a touchy-feely person, so mm -hmm. I need to touch. But as far as long-distance relationship goes, like how he just mentioned there, mm -hmm. um, this is where your communication is what's going to make or break you. Yes. Your communication is is huge. Um, you've got to learn how to really um, be creative in the communication and paint a picture in your communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you say on that? Because um, <laughs> we were talking about uh, yes. painting a picture. Um, painting a picture, the picture that is painted it gives a visual understanding in the person's mind or the people's mind that purity, it makes them not to be jealous. It makes them not to read more into what is that's not. That picture has to be believable enough that the relationship would be sustained because of the absence. Mm -hmm. When the picture is vague, when there's not enough detail, then now we have wandering minds and we will begin to assume things that are not and therefore poses a drag on the relationship. I myself didn't do well with long distance relationships because of what you stated, babe. I'm a touchy person. I'm an up close and personal person. I don't even like texting. I like talking to you on the phone because it's more realistic than texting and I can, I can, I can uh, express myself better tangibly, mentally, physically, socially, all of the above. If you're in that position and you have a time frame that you're only going to be apart for, then now anything is doable. But in that time frame, you have to authenticate properly and profoundly the trust and the assurance that we're in this together and we can hold on until we meet or come together permanently. Yeah. Wonderful. Wow. That was amazing. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys so much uh, for joining us tonight. 6.58. We have approximately two minutes to be out of here. Uh, thank you, LaDonna. Thank you so much um, uh, for joining, joining us, guys. Honestly, it was a very powerful conversation and necessary in this season. And, um, I was mentioning to um, some people that I've been connecting with over Instagram that I'm trying to be very intentional in this season with my connections, be it social media, be it personal. It has to be impactful. And I do think it was very impactful. So thank you guys so much. And I hope that you have a good night. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Take Bye, care. Thank you.